Good morning from one of the biggest cities in the world, Chongqing, China. And we are at the Tiaotimen uh, area here in Chongqing. You can see all the beautiful sky rise buildings behind in front of me, you name it. Yes, hey Randy, thanks for coming out. And we're gonna be going for a little bit of an adventure today. I've got a sign I wanna show you guys. Just gonna make sure you don't get hit by a car here. Thank you, Ken, for the sound check. Much appreciated. Uh, hopefully you guys can verify if we can stream. If we are streaming at 1080, that would be great. Thank you very much for that contribution there, Trevor. Uh, great, awesome. Okay. <laughs> well, you guys know how much I love this city. Chongqing is definitely uh, one of my favorite cities on the globe. And uh, well, I love Chongqing. Now, this is a very interesting area, guys. I have to tell you about it. Uh, well, maybe I'll turn the camera and say hello. Hello. <laughs> um, okay, so good morning anyway. The time check here is 9.05 here in Chongqing. Uh, the city is just waking up Sunday morning. You will see that's not cloud. That is actually the mist and the fog. This, this city's uh, big nickname, the Foggy City, for a good reason. And just between those two buildings there are um, the Jialing and the Yangtze River. So I think we've got the backpack on now and we can go for a bit of a stroll. We'll see how long the camera lasts today. Uh, the locals are going to look a little bit strange at me. Wondering why I'm walking around looking like Ghostbusters, but that's okay. No problem there. And we have the steady cam on as well. So we're going to have a good day. So that uh, there, I was thinking about actually um, moving in to that building. And Yuli and I went and looked at some condos there last week. We do have one condo near the Ai Chung Ching office. As you guys know, I collaborate with those amazing people down there. And uh, good health to Catherine. Hopefully you're watching today. We'll see you back next week. And uh, well, without further ado, the city cleaners are out. And they do this every single morning. There's a happy city worker in there. He's doing his job keeping the streets clean in the beautiful city of Chongqing. I've never seen a city 32 million this clean. Now, let's go have a look here. And uh, that is the Chao Tianmen Station, of course. Uh, nice try on pollution. No, it's not pollution. You will see under that clouds in about 45 minutes. If you've watched a lot of my videos, I have over 200 videos of this city. About by 10.30, those clouds will burn off. Um, they burn off and then there's beautiful blue sky under there. If you don't believe me, <laughs> there's 200 videos on the channel. Hey, let's take a walk up this crazy street. This is a great little street. Ah, thanks Tilly, I appreciate that. Hey Kevin, good to see you out here. Nice to have everybody join us for the day and I'm really glad that you guys can, uh, uh, yeah, hang out with me today on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, if you guys have any requests that you want to see, just let me know. I'd be glad to show you. Oh, my camera's just a uh, tripod. It's not... Yes, let's tighten that up a bit so we can do a full... Uh, see what's going on here. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm surprised that a lot of stores are open already here at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm pretty amazed at that. Uh, usually, uh, they're not, they don't open until about 10 o'clock. Okay, anyway, we got the camera fixed and we're ready to rock and roll. Now, Chongqing is a major city for shopping malls, but what I like to do is come down to the areas here in the city. And yes, there's Mercedes in Chongqing. Let's see, are we going to get hit by a car here? Nope, we're not. city's pretty active here at 9 in the morning. A lot of these ma and pa shops uh, that sell uh, hot pot and you name it. Uh, let's get away from the music there. Oh. So these are traditional little hot pot restaurants. 
and hopefully we can see a bong bong man here. Uh, these guys are really famous for bringing packages up and down the streets here of Chongqing. It's a very hilly street. Now, let me just show you guys for the Western audience that is watching today. These guys, the Beoan, they are the security guards. And these here are what you have to scan to get into the store. All right, good morning, sir. Good morning, yeah, all right. And behind this blue line is deals. And of course, people are working out, getting ready for a day of sales. She's got her little workout on the phone in her own little world there, that's great. Ah, here's a bung bung man here. Now look at all the packages that are just delivered here on Sunday morning, getting ready for sales. Ready to rock and roll, huh? Brand Mick, I call it, everybody, if you don't know. M-I-C, made in China, Brand Mick. If you haven't got yourself any of it, get yourself some of it. There's a legendary, fantastic, wonderful Bung Bung Man. Good morning, sir. Hello, hi. Yeah, very, very well-respected gentlemen and ladies in this town that have built this beautiful city. Now, let me show you why <laughs> Chongqing has Bung Bung Man. And look at the deals behind here. You see all the, I don't know if you guys can see them, 49, 29, 29, 19, that's RMB. So divide that by seven, and those are the costs of your goods. So you can see a couple of sweaters and shirts there, ranging from, I don't know, about $3 to $5. Uh, all types, these are the sales ladies that are, are selling all the stuff behind us. They are heroes, Kevin. You are right. They absolutely are heroes. Um, ah, and here's one there. Hello, sir. Hi. So you can see him there. He's carrying that heavy stuff down. And they're like porters. Uh, I don't think our FedEx guys could do this kind of stuff, but they do. And they work very, very, very hard. I love this city here in the center. It's very energetic. It's always full of vibes. Uh, let's take a walk down here just keeping my backpack going. We'll go for about an hour today here. Uh, batteries uh, permitting and uh, stuff like that. CK, oh wow, thank you very much for that contribution. Much appreciated. Um, so yeah, you guys keep me up to date with our, our sound and uh, picture quality, okay? I think we're doing pretty dang good here. Pretty darn good, yeah. Woo! Lots of exciting news this week, I guess. Uh, Twitter has been taken over by Elon Musk. Uh, quite an exodus there on Friday, I must say. Woo -hoo. A little bit of cleaning house, huh? Oh, wow, this is so exciting to see these shops open. Do you need a winter jacket right now? That was the place to get down here. And through this gate here, there are more shops. Now, I gotta tell you about some of these buildings here. You'll go in on the main floor here, and you'll get out of the other side of the building, and you might be on the 20th floor because the drop that goes down you've got to really look at some of the streets here a lot of underground little sales how are you good morning good morning <laughs> uh, everybody's so nice saying good morning to me well that's great have too many people say good morning to you in your town center ah ah and I'm just rambling things off as I see them in front of me here. You see the yellow taxis. These are also nicknamed the yellow Ferrari. Uh, I don't know if I really need to get into detail why they're called the yellow Ferrari. But uh, yeah, I think you get my point. Most cars here now, most newer cars that are on the streets are um, EV, 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 energy vehicles. Most of them are. Oh, that looks tempting. Okay, so let's have a look at pricing here. Let's do a price comparison, guys. Those are about a little over $2.25 US. That's about $3 for full bakery. That's about less than a dollar, three for one, I guess that is for. Nine RMB, beautifully baked goods, well stocked. No problem, ready to rock. 
All right, comforters for beds. There's some great prices. Morning, good morning, ladies. Good morning. And uh, yeah, lots going on here. So this seems to be the bedding street. And this is the Lululemon competition shops here. So lots of stuff to look at. Now let's talk about e-vehicles. How many are there? They are everywhere. This is one here. This is an e-vehicle here. You see the green plates on the front of the cars there. The green plates represent uh, an energy vehicle. Okay, and there are lots of them. They are everywhere in this city because this city is a major manufacturer of e-vehicles. Last time I checked, we had over 25 cars. Morning. Ooh, as we get into the city, it's alive. It's alive, everybody, it's alive. <laughs> it never stops, really, it never stops. And the Bang Bang Man are ready to go here. They're ready to go. Ah, now I gotta show you guys why Chongqing needs Bang Bang Man. See all these stairs? They go down all these stairs. And right in the middle of this beautiful metropolis, there's stairs, shops, you name it. Vacuum cleaner sales. It's so interesting to see this in a, uh, in a Sunday morning. It's really fun to come down here and shop. And it just winds and winds and more stairs go down. It's really a, it's been nicknamed a 3D and a 4D city for a good reason. You can see. And then it just keeps going down, down, down. Should we go down there? What do you think, guys? Should we go down there? Hmm. Ah, uh, what's down there for us, guys? Ah, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Got a bit of a card game going here. <laughs> Love it. Now, let me give you an idea. Let me give you an idea. Shashi, <laughs> thank you. Of uh, the city's current condition here with the pandemic. We did have an outbreak a couple of weeks ago. City officials went into uh, basically a strategic mode. Uh, testing uh, was accelerated. They found the area, we're back open. And that's just how it rolls here in China. We are hearing some pretty serious rumors. Ah, thank you again uh, for that, uh, Trevor. <laughs> Much appreciated. We are hearing some rumors about March um, some pretty serious rumors about a March opening. Once again, that's speculation. I uh, can't confirm that yet, but as you can tell by the Asian markets, the stock exchange in Hong Kong was up as much as 7%. Now guys, I don't know where I'm going here, but this is the adventure of it. See just in the distance there, the beautiful Raffle City. Let's go out and see what we, oh man, this is amazing down here. What do we got, what do we got going on down here? Okay, let's, let's go have a walk. Let's have a walk. Now this area, this area here that we're in, we can call it the downtown area. Uh, we can call it the downtown area, but it's called the Yuzong area. And it's where all the big skyscrapers that you see in some of my aerial footage, you know, massive uh, 80, 90 story buildings are. But it's kept a lot of its heritage going through a little bit of a dark spot here. So it's kept a lot of its heritage here. And there's a lot of history. So there's a lot of old and new here. And the city is being very careful now with their restoration programs. In all areas, they're trying to keep intact what was there and not to disturb it, but then also modernize it as well. I mean, this country is in a hurry. It, it's in a big hurry. Uh, and it consistently always changes, that is for sure. And I'm gonna to try to get down to the river here so I can give you guys an idea of how beautiful the city is. And you see those stairs? That's what I'm talking about, the, the steps. They just go up, up, and up, and up. Oh, you'll be in shape in no time. Look at the apartments, they're connecting to each other. 
you know, some of these are 10, 20, 30 story, 50 story apartments connecting to each other. And uh, yeah, and this is an older part of the Yuzong area. We haven't even gone to the modern part because actually, I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> uh, look at this, brand shoes and clothing wholesale market. Okay, Yulia would love to come here. Say hi to Yulia, everybody. She's currently at home uh, doing some major editing as we speak. And it looks like my mom just dropped in as well. Nice to see you. Uh, if you don't know who my mom is in the chat, say hi to her. Rama Blue is there. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go down some windy roads here. Unless I can get to the city center or, I don't know, let's go for a while. Let's, let's have a look. But the clothes and the, the garments are very good. You, you boys need some, uh, you need a bong bong man, guys. Need to hire a bong bong man. More shoes, you see? Shoe sales down there, oh yeah. Look at this guy, he's, he's rocking and rolling. And this is the beauty. Uh, my wife and I were walking through uh, the city the other day, and we said, wow, there's so many modern buildings, but then there's so much history. Look at this, look at the size of the shoe market. Hi. Look at the size of the shoe market, holy cow, I didn't know this was here. Well, I'm coming to get some shoes later. Oh, for sure. Maybe, maybe we'll get it set now. How's it going? <laughs> Okay, another skyscraper. I'm trying to find, get my bearings, guys. Figure out where we are. And remember, we started the show. Um, you can now start to see the clouds are burning off and the mist is burning off. The bit of the fog is now burning away. And probably in about an hour's time, there's blue, blue sky peeking underneath that. Ah, and look at what is in the distance there. Do you guys see that? Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. Chongqing, the city of bridges, for sure. In fact, 14,000 of them. Sorry, Pittsburgh, but uh, Chongqing's got you beat on bridges. Some of them are just your regular bridge. Some of them are dual truss uh, bridge, cable state bridge. Uh, some of them have subways going on the lower lane. Uh, it's amazing. These boys are playing cards. I don't want to interrupt them, but couple of locals playing cards here. Hey boys. And we got uh, the shoes going on down here. Oh yeah, pretty busy area. Pretty busy area. Pretty busy. Oh, look at these. Mom, if you see anything, let me know. We can uh, get them for you. It's not often that these guys probably see a Canadian walking down here doing a live stream, but uh, ooh, those would be warm. I think Europe's going to need a bunch of these this uh this winter. With the energy prices, I don't blame you guys from uh, <laughs> buying some extra clothing down there from what I hear. Okay, so let's keep walking. Uh, I'm gonna try to walk down and get us a nice shot of the, uh, the waterfront down here. A little bit of ways to walk, but no big deal. That's what the live stream's all about. Just reading some of your comments. Thank you uh, for joining me. Uh, if you saw me on the Duran, thank you. Cheers to you, Mac. Much appreciated. Ah, there's a question. Can someone from the U.S. move to China and buy or rent a house uh, like at least an acre, grow garden, chicken, such? Absolutely, 100%. You certainly can. In fact, just to give you guys an idea. That building there, that skyscraper there, that is the pinnacle, one of the most expensive buildings in the city. Top quality, five star, pool, restaurants, you name it there. You can rent, i just give you an idea. I was there with fees the other day. Uh, and we're talking quality here because Intercontinental's got a hotel connected to it for about all in including fees for about a hundred and we'll give it 20 meters 900 US dollars I'm not kidding 900 US dollars <laughs> yeah. 
Now, the only reason why I decided against this area for me is I like to come to the tourist spots and around this area there's Liberation Monument, it's very touristy and I think the novelty for me would wear off a little bit. Okay, we're going to be following the, the car trail here. We're going to walk around to the other side of that building and hopefully get a nice shot of the sky. I'll show you guys some of the skyscrapers here while we're walking around. But yeah, I haven't even shown you anything yet what's hiding behind all these buildings. Hoo hoo hoo. Busy for a Sunday morning. Take it easy, China. Take it easy, relax. There's those stairs again. Now you guys are seeing the older part of Chatiman uh, area here. This is an old trading area, guys. But right in behind these uh, buildings here on the peninsula is a fantastic skyline. And I hope we can walk through and show you the other side of Jiang Bay, which is equally as stunning. And of course, uh, where I'm going to be having my second apartment. Can I do that? Is it possible? Yes, we can. Here's the good news. All right, so for those early viewers that said it must be pollution, uh -uh, sorry guys, it ain't. You can see the clouds start to burn off here in about 10 o'clock. Right be behind that is going to be beautiful blue sky. Just check the weather report. Uh, so how much for a house with land, like an acre? Depending where you are in China, but I would say I would use the Canadian term cheap as chips. Uh, in the last year, have I seen inflation here? No. Uh, has the price of many things gone up? No. <laughs> uh, so, uh, how does China do it? Well, China insulates itself. It can contain itself. And uh, it prepares for stuff like this. You know? Oh, okay, guys. Just going to show you this here. This here. Some of you may agree or disagree, but this is how China deals with um, COVID. That is a testing station. Those are everywhere around the city. People come, they scan their phone. You see how quick it is? Scan your phone, get swabbed, test goes to your phone within about five or six hours. That's it. And the cost of that is free. That's it. Not much to there. I don't blame you to move to China. Uh, <laughs> I really don't blame you. I think uh, it's a good idea. I'm, I'm promoting it. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Look at that beautiful bridge in the distance there. And it has a subway going right underneath it. That's just one of many. Uh, so great to see all of you out here today on a beautiful Sunday morning here in Chongqing, China. Uh, and uh, Let us know where you guys are coming in from uh, on the chats. Uh, that would be great. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, I've been in touch with two fairly large YouTube channels that will be uh, collaborating on the launch of the Let's Talk China coming up here I, we're gonna target, we're gonna try guys, we're gonna try. It's all up to the studio. We're gonna try to uh, get Let's Talk China going possibly next week. It's up to me now because it's the studio, okay? And we have all the studio equipment, all the live gear, the graphic equipment, the cameras. Uh, now we're just down to the lighting and a couple more graphical things. And that show will launch with great support, of course, from the Ai Chung Ching team and our goal is to get that program syndicated to be one of the largest talk shows coming out of China to the international market. Don't underestimate me, guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. So here's one of the rivers 
This is the Yangtze, the famous Yangtze River. Now, this river collides straight forward there with the Jialing River here coming up. And these, some of these are cruise boats that go up the Yangtze to some beautiful parts uh, of the gorge, you know, the, the Three Gorge and the gorge area, beautiful stuff. And then some of them are house, or not houseboats, sorry, like party boats or we'll call it dinner cruises and stuff like that. And across the way, that is, I believe, uh, part of Nambin Road, another famous road there. If you guys saw one of my videos when I was down here during the flood, or not the flood, well, the flood was two years ago, sorry, the drought, uh, the Jialing Riverbed pretty much went dry and everybody asked me, where's the garbage? I was like, yeah, good question, where's the garbage? Well. They've been working to clean these rivers up for decades, guys, and it works. As you can see, some of the water line is down. The tide's gone out. I don't see any plastic bottles down there or anything. So, it's a well-kept city. You can see the size of the walk paths here. Yes, I do take my hats off to uh, uh, Ken. Can you moderate uh, that uh, thing on my chat? Um, but yes. Uh, thank you. Sorry about that. I'm just reading you guys' comments. So now we're on the other, we're going around the other side of the uh, Raffle City. You can see up there that piece that's hanging off the top. That's a swimming pool and a sky garden. And the building is actually designed like the front of the sail of a uh, of a ship and it's directly pointed out right to the middle of the connecting rivers both rivers funny enough have different colors so you'll see some photos or maybe even some videos of a river joining each other with two different colors it's quite amazing and if we can wrap around the bend here I know it's a bit of a walk so stay with me uh, if we can wrap around the bend and get up on the other side there, I'm going to show you Jiang Bay. It's a beauty too. Look at all this cargo. Cargo. And let me tell you a bit of a story about Hot Pot and why it's so popular here. See all these boats out there. In the earlier days, Chongqing was a city that had tremendous struggles, okay? This city always hasn't been as glorious and as beautiful as it is now, but it's had its struggles. And these people, the citizens of Chongqing, have always been determined to make their city, well, I would say almost or undoubtedly one of the greatest cities in the world by hard work. Either by the Bang Bang Man that you saw earlier, or all the people that unload and load these containers or these ships on a daily basis up and down the Yangtze to what has now become a major part of the Belt Road Initiative. If you haven't heard about the BRI, just ask in the comments. Our, a lot of people uh, that are in the comment section now know very clearly about the BRI. Anyway, this city has been progressing at record speed. And sometimes your feet, you feel you're in a modern, modern city. But then sometimes you feel like you're in a city of people that are just catching up. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it. And sometimes I feel like I'm in a village. And then sometimes I feel like I'm in a mega city. And it's so hard to explain because this city is growing so fast around these people here that they are even surprised, okay? They are shocked at the growth. Um, we're talking a super mega city here. And the government is investing billions into this city. Whether it's a new bridge, I, uh, there's a new bridge opening up all the time. I can't keep up to them anymore. I love the bridges here. Um, but also, 
the investment in the infrastructure here to connect Chongqing to the rest of the world, whether it's Shanghai, whether it's uh, you know a lot of these other trading routes. Well, it all goes back many years ago where the people that brought goods for trade from these ships would stop here in Chongqing and bring all that stuff up from the river. And it's quite the trek and that's why Bang Bang Men are very popular here in the city of Chongqing. Sorry, just got something in my eye here. But um, food was difficult many, 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 many years ago. And while they were cutting up all types of meats and stuff on these boats, whether it's pork, beef, they would keep the parts that most people wouldn't eat. And they would mix them with a lot of spices. And Chongqing is known, I would say, as one of the spiciest cities on the globe. S spices are in everything, even their ice cream and their vodka. Anyway, the people used these meats that uh, we'll call it leftovers or the scraps of the meat and they cooked them up with lots of spices in a hot pot and that's kind of a story that I think describes the easiest way I can on how hot pot came to be what it is today of course there's more technical stuff on about it but anyway Let's have a look here if we can get around here and walk all the way through. It looks like we can, so we're in business. Now, there's going to be another bridge here. It's great to see all you guys here. And great to see uh, the mods here as well. I'm just going to say hi to John. Hi, John. How are you? Greenery, thank you for coming out. Uh, as well as Captain Canuck. Bit of a blizzard there in Saskatoon, eh? Oh my, sorry about that blizzard in Saskatoon. Well, maybe go out and watch a WHL hockey game because our riders didn't make the Grey Cup. And what does that mean, guys? I'm a little bit of a Canadian Football League fan. Being born in Saskatchewan, what can I say? <laughs> Some of the greatest fans in the world. Everybody likes the underdogs. And you know what, Chongqing is an underdog. Now here's another bridge. You guys might get mixed up. You might say, hey Alex, we already saw this bridge. No, in fact, uh, it's another bridge on the other side here, because now we're at the front of the building. And this bridge only has one. The other one has two, the Dongchuan and, oh, I'm gonna, this is a, Chien, I, I'm trying to pronounce this right, guys. The Chiansimen, Chiansimen Bridge, spelt, spelt with a Q, okay? And uh, we're just going to have a walk here. And I'm going to be able to show you the beautiful uh, waterfront here. Ah, I wish that probably in another 30 minutes we're going to start seeing some of that blue sky peek through. Ah, oh, what a beautiful morning it is. Have a look at that beauty. There's the Yangtze Gold 5. Some of these dinner cruise boats. Now... This is a different river, guys. There, the Yangtze. Here, the Jialing. Jialing meets the Yangtze right there, which is the center of these beautiful building here. And yes, fantastic morning here in Chongqing. Oh man, it's how quiet that is on the on the on the coast here and the. Sorry, not the coast, but the uh, the riverbed. 32 million people in the city, guys. This is how quiet it is. See those there? The old dockings and the, are they bringing up products? How they used to get it up here? Those were the steep steps on how they used to bring up trade. I'll just let you guys take that in for a moment. That's the Tiaotimin Bridge over there. And that there in the distance, guys, is the beautiful Opera House. And the financial part, we'll call it, of Chongqing, called Jiang Bay. The future second home of Alex and Julia, which will have a place there, which will then be able to see this at night. 
and the beautiful skyline that lights up here. But this is a day, day vlog today, so we're just gonna, look at that mist. Isn't that just magical? Ah, Trevor, thank you very much for that. This is not just pride of me being proud of the city, but you don't get streets like this in a city that doesn't care. This is down to the people, this is down to the municipality, and this is down to people that actually care and respect and enjoy and love their city. Safe to walk at night? You bet. Looks like the good old China Mobile 5G is coming through for us today, isn't it guys and girls? I'm going to be doing an upcoming documentary on describing um, poverty alleviation, looking at the western markets on how they deal with poverty and homelessness and comparing it to China and I think you guys are going to be very very shocked at some of the stuff that I'm going to show you as well coming up in December with the collaboration group I Chung Ching we'll be doing uh, starting our filming of our cops Chung Ching similar to the American style cop show I'll be riding along with the police at Chongqing day and night, capturing some amazing footage for you guys. Okay, I'm gonna just stop talking for a bit and let you guys enjoy this. Uh, there's a question here. Am I going to be visiting the mountains? Yes, of course. Um, I have visited the mountains uh, on many occasions here already in the Wulong district. You'll see that I've had uh, some pretty interesting aerial footage for that. As Of course, if you are a Patreon, uh, like Ken Wigger, <laughs> thanks Ken for being a Patreon, you will see some of my other footage there that uh, I don't share on my channel. So. It would really help this channel if you guys uh, even take just the general Patreon package. I'm going to be accelerating more content there because I, I have expanded my team a little bit more to make and edit more content for you guys. So that's good news. So that's in the link below. You'll see it uh, if you guys become Patreons to my channel. The goal is to work up to about 100 Patreons. And if we get to 100, uh, yeah, you're really going to start to see uh, some exciting exclusive stuff, but uh, yeah, um, just so you know from YouTube standpoint, there's a lot of really great content creators out there that most doubtably are making content at a loss. And what I mean by that is investment in cameras, investment in gear, and by the time they get anything from YouTube, they're normally breaking even or uh, at a loss. I know a lot of these YouTubers 
that stuck with it over two or three years and they're finally making a name for themselves. Patrick Lancaster is one of them. Uh, we hope that Mikel Aponte, he's a vlogger as well, um, he's gone back to Kenya. I hope his audience engages uh, with him there because that guy has a heart of gold and he's trying. My goal is though to get him to China uh, to do some content together with us. Much more of the beautiful Giant Bay across. Just behind those bridges there's more skylines and behind these buildings there's more skylines. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice to just wake up there in the morning have a nice little tea or coffee overlooking the bridge. We're gonna walk down here to Hongya Cave and Hongya area here. It's beautiful at night. We'll let these people walk ahead for a bit just so you guys can enjoy it. Hey Ken, yeah, I mean, if you, it's depending on how the calculation is for it, but when you're adding these populations up, like I live in Yubei, okay? Yubei, it's a district here in Chongqing, and it's amazing. Mo most people haven't heard of it. I'm just wondering if I should cross the street here. Uh, look at the maze. Look at the maze we got to do to cross the street here. Uh, that could be, could be challenging. Yeah, we're gonna do it. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, it is foggy. Uh, um, just so you know. Uh, just letting you know. But anyway, um, <laughs> what was I saying? Now? I lost track. So yeah, just in Yubei where I live, uh, the population is 3.7 million, and that's just a uh, you know, there's either districts or there's um, counties, and it depends how you add it up. I mean, Giant Bay, one million people living there, right? Now, is Giant Bay a city? No, it, uh, you know, it's a, it's a district in Chongqing. So, depending on how the calculation, but yes, they're all, they're all joined together. And yeah, it comes up to 30 some million. Ah, thank you very much for that contribution. Uh, Hang says on his channel that he's American, okay. Uh, yes, it is 9.46 a.m. over here. Yeah, that's correct. And we're going to sneak up the stairs here. Here's my favorite car, guys. Coming up, my favorite little car. Let's see if you guys can see it. There it is. Favorite little car. <laughs> okay, we're going to play a bit of Frogger here, guys. I don't know if you remember that video game, but I'm going to try to sneak across this street here and get up to the other side there. Bear with me. It's funny, somebody said to me, why isn't there a lot of escalators there? And I said, what are you gonna do? Rip out 5,000 years of history because you wanna put electric stairs up? <laughs> I thought that was good. See those cars, that's T3 and those are DDs. Those are all E cars and E buses. More DD cars and more T3 cars there. You can see the green license plate. Another green license plate. E vehicles everywhere. There's E vehicles everywhere in this city. Hmm. And it's strange because when you're downtown, you could walk and basically think there's only one building, but man, there's a ton of skyscrapers down here. It's just they're all different levels. Whew. If my wife is watching now, I'm doing my workout for the day, okay? <laughs> oh boy, here we go. We'll get to the top. 
So once again, this is one of those buildings where you can come on the main floor there, but then there's an exit probably on the 10th story coming up. <laughs> this city's awesome. Um, we also had the 20th annual motorcycle event here in Chongqing. Uh, you're, if you're a motorcycle fan, this is the number one city for motorcycles as well in China. It's a big event. Lots of new bikes, lots of, uh, of course, other alternative ways of using bikes. Electric wise. This is great. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Wasn't that fun, guys? Uh, it's like a playground here. Look at this place. These roads just wind around. Boy, where am I now? There's an escalator. That's probably to the exit. I think that's an exit. Let's see where that takes us. This is the CRT. This is um, very well used throughout the city here. You'll see Chongqing Rail Transit. Clean, spotless. Let's have a look at the do not use list on here. No smoking, no tossing, no pets. Do not throw rubbish, no sitting or lying, no spitting, no jumping, no playing, no stacking. Can't bring your balloons. Don't bring anything radioactive or inflammable or toxic. And yeah. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. Oh, Ken, or, or Kevin, you got it right. This place is a, is definitely um, a workout. I just want to say thanks to a lot of the people that have given me donations. Uh, all these donations go towards everything in this channel. You name it, whether it's camera, or equipment, um, I see other fellow content creators on here, like Maniac World. He's got some great stuff uh, that he's done in Mexico and Turkey. I'm following him as well. Uh, so I appreciate him being a moderator to the show. show. Uh, but I can't tell you how grateful I am to have you guys uh, on this channel. I've put over two and a half years, three years into it to make it grow. I want to continue to make it grow. Having your support, whether it's through Patreons, or just watching is gratefully appreciated. There are some more skyscrapers into the distance. I think we should take a little walk up that road and see what we can get up to. Probably have about, yeah, we got some good time left on this stream. Let's keep rocking. That's true, Ken. The signs, the signs are pretty self-explanatory. That's a good, looks like a governmental building as well. Uh, next time I see uh, some of the red banners here, uh, Kevin, if you're handy, uh, if you could translate uh, some of the red banners, that would be great. And there's something else I want to tell you guys about. I saw the most amazing documentary on China a couple of nights ago. There's no talking heads on it. It's just showing China. Guys, city of 32 million. Some guy just trucking down the middle of the street with some towels. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it, man. Uh, Ken, just so you know, uh, the one that said that uh, 
you should be the face of Chongqing for tourism purposes in the West. Well, you're looking at him. I'm with the uh, collaborating with the I Chongqing Group, making videos for the international market. So when this market opens, they will be the go-to videos for people. You bet. I'm directly involved in helping the city promote itself, helping the city understand what it has to offer the world. Even a city like this, and as beauty as it is, it still is, it still is a little bit insecure. It's a consumption city now. New shopping malls are being built, but gotta remember, not too long ago, this city was kind of like a village. Look at Shenzhen, for example, fishing village 30 years ago. Now, Silicon Valley of China, I would say Silicon Valley of the world, uh, especially in R&D, home of DJI and home of all these other amazing electronic shows, uh, or electronic products. Um, so Chongqing is, is growing up. It's maturing. It knows that its future has to move forward and progress. They're doing it. Give them a bit of time. They'll get there. But they have the spirit. There's no doubt about it. They have the spirit. That's that name of the other bridge I showed you guys. The Kiantamen Bridge. Look at these little shop sellers in the morning. This lady's slicing potatoes. She's slicing potatoes. Or let's see. Good morning. Very happy lady. I'm not gonna not gonna uh, distract her from that because that blade looks pretty damn sharp. So let's take a walk up to the Victory Monument. We'll call it the city center. Um, and it is a beauty. I remember three years ago, uh, almost three years ago, December 24th, 2019, I arrived at this area on Christmas Eve with my wife from Thailand, just here for a, oh yeah, I'm on the wrong side of the road here, guys. Anyway, <laughs> or sorry, on the opposite side of the thing. Uh, arrived in this city and looked at my wife and said, wait a minute, this is interesting. Why a city this big, no one has ever heard of. Fast forward a few years later, uh, I'm here. Okay, there's an opening. Uh, this is another lineup here, just to show you guys. Um, I'm gonna try to get on the right side of the road here. See the road here? Some of these are done with just rocks. They've kept it in its original fashion. But yeah, once again, these are morning uh, cues for tests. The city sends out notifications on your mobile and says if you're in this district, that district, and this district, please go to your nearest station and get a check. Now you might think that lineup's long. It's not long. In fact, my average weight per test in line is under most of the time three minutes. You see there's a line going that way and then there's another line coming this way. And yeah, let's go into the city center, shall we? If you guys are cool with that. Great to see 220 of you guys here. Now let's just have a good time with the locals. Okay, uh, Kevin, are you still on the live stream? If you are, going to need your hand here. Uh, just let me know, Kevin, if you're still watching. Or hang, maybe you guys can uh, translate uh, some of these signs. And if you translate these signs, um, just put uh, either a bracket or um, just some marks so you know that uh, that we're translating, okay? Because I would like some people to know what some of these signs say. 
in the city, okay? All right. So hang if you're still here. Let's have a look at the, these, these signs here. What they're what they're saying here. Maybe you could just let the viewers know if anybody speaks Chinese, they can tell us what these mean. Uh, Browdy, yes, I'm on Billy Billy, I'm on Doyen, and I'm on Sequa as well, just so you know. They come out, those uh, content comes out about a day later uh, after I translate the subtitles. Boy, this is a fun part of town. I haven't been here before. This is Care 4. Care 4 is here in the mall. French is selling their items here. The Germans are selling their items here. The Americans are selling their items here. So I don't quite understand the animosity when China tries to sell some of its products in the West. But uh, yeah, here's the Bang Bang Man. They're ready to work today. They're coming and now you can see the sky starting to clear up. Thank you, Hung, for translating that. Hey guys, good morning. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Bang Bang, Bang Bang Man. All right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> some of them love to smile at me, and some of them are saying, Alex, get out of the way. We got customers. <laughs> this is the CBD area here of Chongqing. And if you're looking for tent city, homeless, uh, you're not going to find it. Been here over a year and a half now. And, uh, well, you'll see it on an upcoming upcoming video that I'm going to make. I go into detail on what's going on with that. Here's some beautiful temples in the city. Now we're getting into a lot of the shopping mall areas. More downtown, more condos. It's a great part of the city though. Hey, 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 there's an escalator. Thank you for translating that. So Kevin, that's interesting uh, that you're saying that it's so sad to see the Chinese dealing with COVID for so long. Uh, I'm going to read something uh, that might make you understand a little bit more about this country and its culture and its people. This country has taken precautions. I've lived under these conditions for a year. They've kept me safe. If my 82 year old or 80 year old mother or 79, sorry mom, uh, 79 year old mother lived here, I would feel pretty good about that right now. simply because the government has taken responsibilities. China's not closed. It's closed internationally. But does this look closed to you, Kevin? I don't know. People are getting on with their lives. People are shopping. Great, Kevin. You lived in China for five years. Then, if you would have learned something when you were here, you would see that Chinese people take responsibility for their loved ones. It's 
great. I'm happy that you're out and you're free to roam your countries. Keep in mind some countries that have had tens and millions of people that have been infected. Millions of people that have died. Or a country that is taking responsibility. So what should China do? Open up. Let it rip. Do you like the let it rip strategy? Let it rip on 1.4 billion people? That kind of strategy? You feel sorry? I don't feel sorry. People are living their lives. They're getting on with it. They have an application that actually works on their phone. It works. It's not a government that has pumped in $4 billion to have a failed app. It's a good app. Yeah. Now you might say, well, it, it's privacy. Really? The privacy? <laughs> the privacy that Google does to our phones when it pings our phones? That privacy? I'm going to read something to you. There's no forced vaccination here, Kevin. And if you're saying there's forced vaccination, you're lying. Because there's not. I know many Chinese that have not got the vaccination. So the information that you're spewing in the chat, chat form right now is an absolute lie. Absolute lie. The government would like the older generation to get vaccinated. But that's a choice. So whatever you've read, it's wrong. I'm here in China. I know it. Now, let me read something to you. And this isn't about, this isn't about vaccinated or non-vaccinated. That's not my intentions to talk about that. That's a choice that people can have here. A choice that people can wear a mask if they want to. That's a choice. So this whole force stuff, non-starter. But let me read you something. I think that says it, kind of says it all if I can find it here on my phone while I'm walking with you guys. It was quite an interesting article uh, that was written. I'll just let you guys enjoy the beautiful scenery for a moment while I pick up this article and find it. So somebody wrote the following. Marco Castelli on Twitter said, last two weeks of my life in Shanghai, daughter, daughter's school closed for seven days. Our building was locked today. I won't let some bureaucratic ruin my life. This is too much. I can make money in Europe as well. That's it. Okay? That's what the guy said on Twitter. Response is, Shanghai is still the most attractive place of wealth in China, Asia, and even in the world. Some people left, more will come. Marco goes on to say, of course, will be a great place forever, but I cannot waste precious time behind bureaucratic powers. Life is too short. Response, your so-called bureaucratic power has saved the lives of millions of Chinese, especially the elderly, in the past three years. They are more important, they are not more important to you because you are young and rich, but they are compatriots, friends and family. They are real and precious. Need I say more about that? Kevin, I've seen you on here many times. I appreciate the interaction. Maybe it's the way, the tone that you deliver it. But I'm a pretty level-headed Canadian guy. I'm a pretty good guy. I can see things. And I've seen some of your comments on my channel, which is fine. 
but then there has to be a line that's kind of drawn sometimes where yeah anyway there are other things available as we see here being controlled by your government at every step is also a side effect you must be referring to my Canadian government right <laughs> anyway guys let's go on to a more positive note Kevin, I got some good news for you. When we bring back the Let's Talk China show, we will have a call-in part of the program. And that can be where you call into the studio and have a chat with people like Daniel Dumbro, people like Cyrus Jansen, who will be joining the program. And we can have an open, mature, respectable conversation about such measures and you can let us know, maybe, there's some things that we can learn from you when we speak like adults, and we can move forward. So I look forward to that interaction. Yeah, this is quite the, quite the intersection, guys. Now you think with bad air quality, Well, I'm sorry if uh, Dumbrell blocked you, Kevin, but maybe you can have another shot at him unblocking you. I guess he must have blocked you for a reason. But anyway, the good news is, Kevin, is coming up in the next few weekends on the Let's Talk China show, we will welcome guys like you or girls um, to call into the show to engage in great, great conversation during our live stream. You can look forward to that. Oh, the food looks yummy here, guys. Hi, good morning, good morning. Niha. <laughs> Husband and wife love these people here. Just love it, just love it. Mmm, look at these old places. Oh, I'm getting hungry, guys. I'm getting hungry. Not angry, hungry. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, we're walking, we're gonna get down to the main center here. Ah, uh, Daisy, great to see you. Uh, oh yes, okay, uh, the lily pad. How does the calling work to get on the program? Um, good, so our new studio will be able to take 1-800 number calls direct into the show. We will be inviting people if they do choose to be on camera, no problem there as well. You can also contact the show by WeChat, by Skype, by Telegram, by WhatsApp. And we might even have a, a cool 1-800 line. I don't know, maybe 1-800-haters? <laughs> I don't know, guys. But you can help me out with coming up a number for the Let's Talk China call-in. It's got to be a 1-800 or 188, something like that. So it's free for the people viewing the show to call in. But yeah, everybody, everybody uh, can call into the show. Now it's interesting, um, some people do have opinions about China when maybe they've moved out of here. Even in three years, this place has massively changed. We're talking about tens of millions of people that come out of poverty. I think 800 million in the last uh, couple of decades. So yeah, if you've been out of China for a few years, you're obviously uh, kind of having a little bit of outdated information, which is unfortunate. I would say if you really are missing the country that much, it's probably a good idea to go down to your local embassy, apply for a visa, come on back in, and uh, China welcomes you. I'm enjoying my life here in China. I left Bangkok, I think my followers know. I lived in Bangkok, and boy, I gotta say, I traded up. Uh, as we say, I traded up, and it's beautiful. So we're gonna go down to the city center. You guys are gonna join me for a quick coffee. If Ken, you could drop my Patreon link in there. This is the first time I've actually, in three years, 
promoted my Patreon link in my uh, live stream because I actually want to grow that and make it a community of people that can really help and contribute to this channel and share some ideas with me about it. Basically, I'm getting serious on the Patreon. <laughs> Oh, there we go. There we go, Kevin. There's your true colors. I'm seeing your blocked messages. Anyway, Kevin, hang that, hold on to that animosity and that anger until we get the Let's Talk China show in so you can come on the, to the airs. We're going to have thousands of people on that show and they would love to hear your perspective from outside of China on what's going on inside of China. Beautiful. Here's some nice buildings guys and we're coming down into that, that's the Crown Plaza. Uh, it's 19 out. It's supposed to go up to about 24 today. But it, it was a scorcher here in the summer. Wow it was hot. Hotter. Hot tamales. Now, excuse the background noise, guys, because we're getting into the busy area. Okay, Hang, are you ready? I've got another keeping the city clean. Is that going on in your main city every Sunday morning? Well, probably every day, in fact. So let's see what I can do and I can't do here in China. Well, I can have a beer, I can go to KTV, I can travel around the country, I can get on safe bullet trains, I can probably raise my voice in public if I wanted to, I can eat at any restaurant I want to, I can go to beautiful red art museum there, I could play guitar in the center of the town if I wanted to. But what I probably can't do is break the friggin law. <laughs> so, whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, hang, let's have a look here. Need you for this hang? Or anybody, if you guys would like to uh, tell us what these things are. I could get out my translator. You know, I got to tell you guys, Microsoft Translator with AI camera technology is amazing. Okay, I used to think it was Google that was great at the translation, but this Microsoft stuff, I can't pull it up because um, I'm on reading the comments on YouTube with you guys. Oh yeah, and in China, I guess I could go shopping at Prada if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, looks like we still got some battery left, so this is great. in the university area, whether it's in Yubei with Y-U-B-E-I, whether it's in the Zhangbei, you know, north of the city, it don't matter. It's nice, clean, happy, everyone's having a good time. This is some 25th anniversary going on here. Looks like the skyline of Hong Kong there. Yep. I think a bit of Zuhei and Macau. But here you go, beautiful center. There's a bit of Gucci if you guys want. St. Laurent's opening up, Rolex, oh yeah. We're cut off from the world here everybody, we're, uh, we're cut off. Oh, we're cut off. Uh, it's just hilarious, yeah we're cut off here. So. 
Uh, yeah, it's got 3D advertisement uh, in other parts of the town and city. Um, there is currently the largest building, the Lixshuri Tower, the IFS building, but soon to lose its crown to the soon to be famous, uh, I believe it's called um, Chongqing 100. I did a video in there. Guys, um, newsflash, Chinese internet is cut off. Wait a minute, where am I? Oh, that's right, I'm in China. <laughs> oh God! Oh, I did, I did, you know what, guys? I did. I, I did need a. Uh, I did need a laugh today, and I've got it. <laughs> it's amazing how someone can't learn anything in five years. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I actually asked uh, some of my Chinese friends. I said, "Hey, guys." Um, why uh, why don't you guys come to Google? And they say, what the hell for? What's on Google for us? We got Baidu. I said, well, do you guys come to to, uh, to YouTube? They said, why? We got uh, Billy Billy. We got Sequa. I said, what about TikTok? And they said, Ahem. you mean the parent company, Doyit, which owns TikTok, the Chinese-based application that the rest of the world uses. That one? <laughs> so they know what's going on. You guys know what's going on. But guys, it's been quite the morning here, uh, bringing you guys along. And I look forward to you guys uh, becoming uh, part of the uh, Let's Talk China audience coming up. Crossing my fingers that we get the lighting in the studio down. It's a brand new studio. Lots of money invested, okay, and time, lots of it. And uh, it's gonna look spectacular. And uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough. Uh, please become Patreons to my channel. That would greatly help me uh, to progress this channel. And uh, I think this one is gonna be for my Canadian friends here that are watching. I think you guys recognize this. I would normally say holy hell, but as we say in Canada, holy double, H-E double hockey sticks. There's the good old Tim Hortons there in Chongqing. Kind of a blessing, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm gonna bunker down here at uh, Tim Hortons. I'm gonna get myself probably, uh, I don't know, something to eat for the morning uh, breakfast. And I'm gonna read some of you guys' comments. We'll wind up the show. It's been a fantastic morning here. And, uh, whoa, that has been great. Give me a second here as we figure out this equipment. And we get it all out of the pocket here. There is the uh, live view box if you guys haven't seen it before. That's what I use to stream here in China. That's it there. Just so you guys know. Looks like uh, this is SF Delivery. These guys are a pretty big delivery company here in China. And I'm going to read some of you guys' comments. So just bear with me while I get my laptop open and fire up the internet. Fire up the internet and see what you guys are saying. <laughs> okay, give me a second. All right, what do we got going on here? Just gonna wait a sec here. I want to thank the moderators for keeping uh, this a pretty decent live stream today. Uh, 283 of you guys. Um, Lilypad, ice caps are the best, thank you very much. 
Uh, <laughs> I greatly appreciate that. Um, I've just now got my laptop ready to rock here and just seeing what you guys are saying now. So let's just dive into it. I'm um, really blessed that uh, we had a, uh, a really nice live stream today, guys. Uh, I want to thank everyone uh, who's been part of this uh, channel for the last three years. Great things are about to happen. I'm so excited to bring back the Let's Talk China show. Um, of course, um, you'll be seeing some pretty big names come on the show, as well as uh, I'm going to be having a future live stream with the Duran. Uh, they are a big channel, uh, and uh, we will be um, doing that. Let me just read some of your messages here. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, coffee might be good in the morning, I agree. <laughs> uh, yeah, just reading the rest of you guys' comments. Well, anyway, um, I'm back into the editing uh, programs uh, later tonight. Um, I'm going to be having a fantastic video come out next Sunday, of course, 9 p.m. Don't forget to share this video if you can. And, of course, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, once again, I just want to thank everyone uh, who has been part of this um, part of this live stream today. Just show you, so you guys know, this is the equipment here. This is one modem here. It has a, a slot for another modem, and then another SIM card and another. So it it is a little bit costly to run these live streams, but that's okay. Uh, it takes about four SIM cards. Uh, but wow, I'm, I'm just watching the quality of my live stream here right now. I'm actually impressed guys. So great uh, Fantastic. Well guys, that's it for me here in Chongqing, China. I really really once again want to thank you for being such a open um, Community it's you guys that make this channel fun to do and you guys that comment on the videos even after we're done here today Don't forget to like and comment and to all those other content creators out there, keep working hard, keep getting that subscriber base up. There's guys like me and you that uh, we all need to stick together and help each other. Uh, special shout out to uh, Maniac Canadian again for um, helping, for Ken as well, Kevin and all the other people. Ramo, uh, thanks mom. I think I got your age wrong by one year mom. Don't blame me for that. Anyway, the audience loves you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, uh, look forward to maybe seeing a few of you guys on the Patreon. And uh, that's it for me here in the city of 32 million people here in China. The lovely, the beautiful Chongqing, China. Guys, you take care. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye now.